Hello and good evening to you all. I am Parthoru, event planner for Microsoft Reactor Bangalore. Thank you all for joining us today at Reactor Bangalore. The session will run over next 60 minutes, including Q&A. This session will be recorded and will be uploaded to our Reactor YouTube channel. We will share the link of our YouTube channel in the chat section soon. Before we begin, please take a moment to read our code of conduct. We are all here to learn together, so please be respectful of other people's views, understanding of differences, being kind and considerate in the way you engage. The chat will be open throughout and we do encourage you all to participate. Also keep your mics muted during the session. I would now like to welcome Jigar, our speaker for today's session. Jigar is a partner and senior solutions architect with TechScalable and has 16 plus years of experience. He has trained more than 2500 plus IT professionals across the globe. He is also a Microsoft certified trainer. As of now, I'll hand over to Jigar to begin the session. Hey, thanks, Park. Thank you for the intro. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for joining this session. As you might have joined and you must have heard that uh, now Things are moving on the track and sessions are beginning with uh, in person and uh, I think people are really enjoying. So let's see, hope for the best and we can have more and more such kind of sessions going forward in future. OK, so let's come back to the point and uh, let me share my screen. OK, just let me know if you guys can see my screen and uh, just for to avoid distraction, I'll turn off my camera and we'll turn on at the end of the session. Yeah. OK, so uh, today we are here to uh, learn about uh, processing or streaming data with the help of Event Hub and uh, we will be discussing that. Uh, what kind of options Microsoft is offering in terms of planning and hosting? Uh, the variety of activity on top of that, right? So we will be discussing regarding uh, the how a component looks like, what kind of options we can have it in place, and if in case any such particular event hub related or Databricks big data solutions movement, if we are looking at it, then how it works and what kind of options available. So first of all, uh, probably we will get familiar with a couple of elements. Say, for example, streaming live data with uh, Spark and all, uh, having your particular information to be covered up uh, with the help of those particular activity. So we'll understand, first of all, uh, with the concept of that. And then we will go ahead with uh, a simple demo, like small one, but uh, we will at least get familiar with that. Uh, from the self-learning point of view, definitely you guys will get a link. Uh, it will be shared during the session and those links you can utilize for your learning journey as well. So that will be a kind of. Uh, you can say a step by step activity where you can consider that uh, if in case any implementation you are looking for that particular solution, then you can work with that. So in in case of uh, uh, what do you say the implementing any uh, data stream when you have a particular big data uh, requirement where you have a specific uh, 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 data streaming uh, processes you wanted to uh, consider and all and it has to be like structured streaming and all. So what kind of approach available? What kind of like uh, business use case you can uh, think through and if you are planning to go ahead with such kind of activity, then what is the implementation? So first of all. Uh, uh, as per the diagram, if you see so uh, Databricks Event Hub, so uh, I'll explain both of the component individually. So first of all, if you can think through, I have just tried highlighting like let's assume that you have a Twitter uh, so uh, imagine that we have some particular live event going on and we just wanted to stream our particular data and we wanted to capture information that people who all are uh, 
posting a particular tweet message and maybe you are getting thousands and millions of tweets regarding that specific event and you just wanted to uh, keep a track of those particular data and maybe get some good quotes and publicize on your particular twitter wall during that particular uh, session that is one thing right uh, maybe another use case if you can think through that probably uh, let's imagine uh, the airline uh, probably airport and airline services right so we just wanted to capture a data that uh, from the specific uh, locations uh, what all the different airport locations are there we wanted to capture that uh, how many flights are uh, got delayed and what was the delay duration time frame and what was the reason behind that specific delay and how that particular uh, overall delay process can be improvised and maybe uh, it can be implemented as a process and maybe uh, they can train probably the staff and everybody to make sure that how they can improvise the process and how they can manage or avoid certain kind of delay processes so that uh, airline uh, stop losing money because end of the day uh, they need to pay some fine or they need to accommodate some additional stuff for the passengers during that activity right so uh, could be a business use case right so we we need to plan we need to figure it out that whatever the air uh, whatever the airports are there and how they are frequently uh, like landing those particular flights and what was the overall delay time frame they wanted to capture so the data is incoming uh, in terms of uh, uh, millions of records are getting ingested into the system and at the end of the day you need that specific data to be uh, processed at the back end correct so in terms of uh, processing we need a, a specific uh, uh, structured uh, streaming so basically uh, it's an uh, uh, apache spark api that uh, basically let you express your uh, computation and streaming data in into some specific way where you can add them as a batch and you can have a kind of computation on that uh, specific data what you have so ultimate goal over here is to provide you a kind of uh, uh, structured uh, data process you may use any of these specific languages like uh, python scala java or all of them and you can have your particular uh, like solution built on top of that so ultimate goal over here is to uh, provide you a kind of uh, a business use case and it will helpful to you in terms of streaming your particular data on top of that now to stream this particular data we will divide this particular part into two sections one is uh, basically data bricks and second is event hub now understanding data bricks architecture so the purpose of data bricks maybe you can have uh, uh, data incoming uh, from the uh, specific sources right so the data can be ingested from the variety of sources you are you can expect and at the end of the day the specific data uh, will be implemented with the specific services what you have so here you can consider that you may have uh, adf you may have uh, data lake store uh, probably blob storage is your particular scalable storage device to dump your particular data and event hub is majorly so our our today's focus is on this particular piece where we can consider that the data streaming can can be taken care with the help of event hub and uh, the data bricks will provide you a compute unit where you can process your particular informations with uh, spark queries and uh, a spark api and then you can have some sort of analytics on top of that so all that particular integrations you can go through seamlessly and at the end of the day it will provide you a kind of effective solution to ingest the big data streaming with the help of these particular components so uh, there will be a component which we are planning to utilize as in uh, databricks as a uh, as in compute instance whereas uh, event hub will become a kind of uh, a kind of like you can say pub sub model where you can provide your particular uh, producer and consumer uh, both the elements uh, can be configured with that we can have a uh, multiple partitions and uh, it will be taking care of a variety of big data solutions on top of that so you can ingest the data the data can be seamlessly processed with the data bricks at the back end and uh, of course i mean in the support of that specific uh, component you may use uh, 
a variety of uh, additional component to secure or to work with those particular environment you may have uh, these particular activity to be taken care so probably devops uh, azure devops could be there where you can have your queries to be stored and uh, you can make a kind of uh, continuous integration deployment processes on top of that uh, also uh, of course i mean at the end of the day uh, you need certain type of uh, visualization of your particular data so probably you can plan or you can go through with your definitely power bi or if any uh, ml studio or probably any synapse analytics related activity which you are looking at it then in such case these are some particular component are available now along with this uh, event hub so definitely you may have uh, thousands of uh, or millions of producers who can ingest the data in uh, event hub and there might be a specific partitions so partitions allows you to break up your particular data with those partitions i mean in layman language i can say it's a kind of uh, uh, you can ingest your data from a variety of uh, endpoints or multiple endpoints and that could be the data ingestion can be done with some secure protocols like https or amqp and all that and the millions of records get ingested into the system and uh, whatever the a uh, big data you want to stream on top of that uh, you can have a particular uh, multiple partitions and those partitions can be consumed via your event receiver so these are your particular nodes now these nodes could be anything right so these nodes are responsible to basically uh, pick up the data from your each partitions and uh, they they may get processed based on the requirement what you have so ultimate goal is to provide you a kind of real time analysis and uh, you can have uh, this kind of activity to be taken care with the combination of data bricks and as well as the uh, event hub so the purpose of event hub i mean of course i mean this is not just only the use case but uh, event hub point of view you can uh, you may end up uh, working with uh, a variety of business use case probably you can say nowadays uh, iot related uh, applications or connected devices connected car connected home appliances right so many different uh, internet driven solutions are there and in such case you are expecting the millions of record sets are getting ingested into the system and those record sets you wanted to process from the back on uh, back end of the uh, infrastructure what you have right so in such case definitely i mean this could be a uh, Uh, way to go i mean the the event hub is kind of offering you that uh, structured streaming and you can process millions of record uh, in the no time right so and and from the back end point of view de definitely you can have a component of uh, a kind of data bricks which will allow you to uh, stream your uh, data and you can have some sort of spark queries written on top of that to uh perform with that particular activity right so that's that's basically a kind of standard uh components are part of it we will discuss the uh, the entire architecture workflow and then we'll see uh, a kind of demo activity or maybe you can if time permits then we can take a look at it that part but at least i can help you out or explaining that how the data breaks and event hub can combine together and you can have a better data streaming activities to be taken care in that case yeah uh of course from the learning point of view so uh, this link is going to be shared with you uh, in a chat window but at the same time you can find this particular learning uh, microsoft learn link from your particular uh, event page as well and i strongly recommend that uh, uh, you should uh, uh, go with this particular component or maybe uh, implementation of this particular activity by uh, logging in with the Uh, outlook account and uh, go through with this particular learning path so the advantage over here is that you may get some particular uh, the microsoft learn badges uh, of course i mean and you can accumulate some particular uh, pointers as well from that particular portal so it's a default microsoft learn activity maybe you can say so that will be helpful to you and you can have some particular learning path to be completed and maybe later stage that will be helpful in terms of your uh, uh, maybe uh, the learning path competitions and other stuff maybe when microsoft comes up and all maybe you can have those things also as a part of that 
so let's take a look at it and let's understand the how overall architecture looks like what kind of uh, activity we need to follow in terms of uh, data bricks and all and what all the features uh, uh, event hub is offering what kind of like structured streaming we need to consider then uh, what will be the mechanism we need to follow in that particular case right so uh, first of all we will take a look at it uh, uh, there are like different kind of uh, models are there for the structured streaming point of view so we will talk about that and uh, we will also discuss regarding the uh, overall databricks model where the overall architecture which will be allowing you to ingest your data you may have some processing you may have some storage of that particular data and you can end of the day you can analyze that specific data with the overall activity what you are looking at it okay so first of all uh, go to my sketch tool so in general if we are planning any such particular uh, uh data uh, streaming and all right so what kind of data we are expecting to stream in terms of overall uh, business use case what we have right so first of all we will be talking about that part and then we'll uh, talk about like uh, what is the use case we need to think through and all so if we are planning with any specific uh, uh, data to be ingested then a variety of uh, uh, endpoints or variety of uh, like you can say business use case who generates the data so you can consider that uh, there might be millions of uh, sensors you have uh, you can consider iot devices right you you may have like a social media platform right so basically it will be a kind of uh, a kind of option where you can have your social media platform your or in case any like online transactions right so in almost all these particular scenario in almost all these particular uh, design considerations and all uh, you may have the structured streaming can be uh, utilized right so uh, basically as a overall uh, data ingestion what we are getting from these particular component uh, you will be able to get a large scale of data it will be a real time data ingestion into the system and at the end of the day what you need is that you need to perform the stream of that data and you need to process those data for your business use case and all right now in this particular scenario uh, apache spark basically offers you a kind of uh, a structured streaming process so your data will get stream or treated as a table that basically you may have some continuous update to that particular table it get ingested the event what you are triggering and at the end of the day it will get processed from the back end so you may process that specific data with some standard batch or maybe you can have some sort of query or uh, you can get certain kind of activity to be taken care from the back of the system so you need to consider that let's say data stream uh, it's a kind of input where your data is getting ingested and uh, you may have some particular business use case to be taken care of from the uh, different different component right so uh, here i can say you may have a particular let's say uh, kind of operational activity where you can consider that uh, uh, here you can consider that you may have let's say time time based data ingestion is going to be defined so uh, you can consider the timer you can consider that what you gonna get it as an input you may have a particular result in between and you may have some sort of final output of your particular data now timing point of view i can consider that you may ingest your data per second you may ingest your particular data in millions of requests so you may have a, a specific uh, a data structure which is something getting ingested into the system right so let's assume that you may end up uh, having your data ingestion right so every every second you may have a particular data input and uh, 
specifically once the data is into the system you need to like uh, query that uh, particular data in place right so probably you can consider that okay i mean there are some particular data model available and you will be defining certain type of queries in between and uh, you will end up having the common uh, result or maybe you can say you may have some structured query to be applied to it so those queries are uh, basically processing your particular data what you have uh, uh, like planning to implement with it and <coughs> once the data is into system uh, you may have some sort of uh, a uh, core uh, result to be available right so maybe that could be your first cut of your particular data get ingested into the system and once the data is in place uh, you may get further process you may get particular further uh, result to be processed and you may get final output of this particular data at the end of the day so here i can consider that uh, the output could be your uh, final a closure of your data process whatever you have right so maybe i can say how the streaming structure streaming works so we are just trying to take a look at that particular part so in this particular case you may have your uh, particular process to be taken care you may have your particular data is getting ingested and your structure streaming may get uh, this is your output will be your here you can say complete more right so whenever uh, a query input generates a result table so uh, at the back end what will happen it will uh, every every second it will trigger Uh, every interval like or maybe you can say every second it will trigger the uh, event and new rows are getting appended in, uh, appended into the specific table and eventually these updates are going towards the result and that result is going to be aggregated uh, towards the final uh, defined uh, you can say a kind of output what you are expecting at the end of the day so there are uh, uh, three elements which gets uh, uh, composed during this so whenever this output is getting uh, written to the any external storage so uh, this particular output can be configured in a different different mode right so it has a uh, it has a complete mode or it has a, a probably you can say uh, append mode right or you may have third one is like uh, uh, update mode so these are certain type of modes so complete mode is basically uh, update the entire uh, uh, result table uh, and it get written into some some of your particular external storage so it will get updated to your storage connector uh, uh, to decided how how it how it is going to be handle the writing your entire table structures and all append mode is basically it will only append by name you can make it out that it will only append the a uh, specific uh, result oriented table and uh, it will only update that last trigger uh, uh, with that return to that uh, external storage uh, services what you have so this is basically applicable only for the queries where existing row uh, is in uh, available into the result table and are not expected to change or modify so in such case like you can just simply go ahead and append that specific uh, component update mode is majorly focused on uh, only the row that are getting updated i mean by name you can again make it out that it is going to be only update your result table since that is the last trigger uh, uh, return to that particular external storage and at the end of the day the uh, this is little bit different from the complete mode right so update mode is majorly only only focuses on the output uh, uh, only uh, row whatever is like getting updated and then it will uh, since last trigger when it occurs accordingly it will get updated and your uh, query may not contain any aggregation it is just the uh, almost equivalent to the append kind of thing but uh, it get triggered on top of that so ultimate goal over here is that 
uh, whenever you are planning any such kind of activity you may load your particular data into the system and structure streaming uh, uh, it will uh, i mean you can go through with your particular data bricks component and it will initialize the activity the way it is expected now if i want to consider or if i want to un understand the overall architecture like if i wanted to stream my particular data uh, along with uh, uh, data bricks and all so what could be the business use case we can think through or uh, i just wanted to process that specific data on top of that then what is the scenario we can plan and we can think through so here i just give example of uh, uh, you can say airline services right so in airline services we may think about that uh we can have a particular structured uh, data incoming from the different different uh, endpoint or sources and we just wanted to ingest that specific data into the system and at the same time it is expected to process uh, from the back end services as well now imagine that a similar kind of uh, many enterprise services are there uh let's take a, another analogy uh, yeah maybe you can think about cap services right nowadays like uh, Uh, there are many uh, fleet cap services are there and uh, if you can consider uh, they are generating tremendous data on daily basis right simple example uh, maybe you can imagine like if you are traveling from one location to other location and the duration or distance are long then definitely uh, like it generates a lot of lat long value of your particular journey or that trip and at the end of the day what you need to do is that uh you need to uh, store and capture those particular informations for billing purpose or how much duration it took and what all the route a uh, driver has captured and a lot of many data will get generated and all that so here you can assume that maybe there are two different uh, uh, devices which are sending data one is basically the person who is booking that particular cab services and uh, the other like driver who is basically a uh, uh this cap service provider who is uh, accepting those particular right details and all that stuff right so it will be two different devices uh, pushing the data and at the same time you need to provide at the end of the day uh, trip details goes to both i mean the person who is driving the cab and as well as the passenger who is traveling so you need to provide information to both of them so in this case uh the taxi has a meter basically which sends the information about each ride and uh, Uh, both the different uh, uh, stakeholders like driver and as well as the passenger both of them should get that particular data uh, equivalent right so for example they need to see the duration how much it took the distance and uh, from where it got picked up and where the drop of locations and a lot many informations are part of it right and nowadays you must have seen that Uh, those applications started putting some additional facilities and features into it but these are some basic needs what you can consider correct so at the end of the day both separate devices accepts uh, payment uh, and uh, uh, it it completely validate all that particular trip details uh, from the customers and uh, uh, send the fair details to both of them that okay uh both the uh, entity the driver and passenger they both of them get all these particular common data and uh, it it has to be mutually agree from both the side right i mean uh, i mean it shouldn't be that passenger should get some different billing and driver should get some different uh, billing right so it has to be uh, combined uh, data uh, should be inputted and at the end of the day uh these informations are you need to imagine like this is more about like business use case but uh from the uh, back end point of view the company who is managing this particular cap services and all for them this data is very much important because end of the day uh, these data are coming in real time and at the back end we need to they need to plan that how these particular data going to be Uh, calculated or they are going to be like managed from the uh, back of the system right so here i can say okay uh, to consider that maybe i can divide this particular activity in a, a different different section maybe you can say you may have a, a data get uh, ingested you may need to uh, process that particular data Right? because at the end of the day whatever the informations we talked about those are the things they need to 
process you need to store somewhere and last but not least uh, you need to analyze that particular data or you can have some uh, dashboard and you can provide certain kind of result on top of that now if it is the ingestion of the data maybe you can say uh, the data is getting ingested into the system from different sources so here you can consider that you may have uh, a particular cap services provider right so <clears throat> different different cap services you may have uh, particular data getting ingested into the system in real time and of course you may have a passenger also uh, onboarding into those cab and they are also booking a particular trip they are also having those particular information in coming into the system and we need to make sure that those data is going to be taken care from the back of the system so first of all you may have a particular event hub i can bring it into picture where the role of event hub is to provide you a kind of uh, data ingestion right so whatever the incoming data you have it's going to be ingested by the event hub so you can consider that you may have a particular event hub as an component right uh, the data is getting ingested into millions of record and the purpose of the event hub is to provide you a kind of uh, having certain type of partitions from the back of the system and it is something giving you a kind of uh, data processing to be taken care so here i will consider that uh, i'll get uh, uh, event hub so this particular component is uh, allowing me that whatever data is getting ingested it will be getting into my event hub uh, as in structure and from the event hub i'll be able to push my particular uh, data to my data bricks for having a particular real time analysis on top of that and to do such particular kind of configuration maybe you can have your particular uh, event grid uh, sorry data bricks to be like created and whatever the data process i am expecting at the uh, back of the system so these particular data is going to be triggered and managed uh, with the help of my particular services what i am looking at it so in this particular case uh, whatever the uh, data processing you are uh, expecting it's something you can uh, take care with your particular data bricks as in services right so data bricks going to uh, offer you in terms of uh, a kind of mode where your data processing will be like captured and stored from the back of the system and uh, behind the scene if in case any a particular compute nodes and systems you wanted to put it from the back of the system then this is something what you can plan or this is something what you can utilize uh, at the back of the system so here you may have your uh, data bricks right so uh, uh, if i wanted to consider that the architectural component so basically data source so in this particular reference architecture we can consider that there are multiple data sources who are pushing the data streams into uh, system in a real time scenario so first stream contains uh, the uh, ride information right so that maybe if it's a flight example then it will be capturing the passenger details and flight details into the system or if it is a taxi a cap scenario then you can consider that it will be capturing the rider uh, details into it right so these informations are getting captured and in a uh, in a second content so maybe you can say the first one uh, in our case here the first component over here maybe we can consider that okay it is something uh, capturing a particular data of uh, just a second
so here you can consider that how the data is going to be captured in our particular system and it is going to be processed at the back end so here uh, it may be possible if it's a uh, cab related then here it will be capturing uh, maybe uh, rider details and this one is for a particular the second one you can say it it is containing a particular uh, a fare related informations and all and uh, both the particular uh, streams are performing on top of that so here i can consider that my data gets simulated and it generates that specific data and that data it's getting uh, read from the static files and it, it uh, these particular data get pushed uh, to my event hub so event hub is going to capture this information in real time application and it can be like performing all the cab related details to be captured with the help of that so the role of my event hub over here is that it will be expecting the or ingesting data into the system and uh, both the both the data sources like maybe ride and fare and both of them uh, they both are like associated with each other uh, and they are getting captured or maybe you can have uh, separate instances because end of the day you need to calculate fare you need to uh, keep a track of riding details and all that and at the end of the day you will be providing those info so that's where you can have those particular uh, uh, the informations to be captured with the sources and the event hub combining you can have that particular option the role of data bricks so in this particularly what we going to get it that we going to have a uh, spark based uh, uh, analytics right so here you can consider that uh, you can have a particular spark based analytics on top of that and th this is something like it's a kind of a fully managed uh, analytics uh, uh, platform available and it is something uh, you can say it will correlate all your taxi related data may be combining whatever the data informations you are pushing like either trip details or your particular fare details so both the data will get uh, a correlate and then it will enrich that particular correlate data with the help of uh, the data bricks and at the end of this particular process it will allow you to uh, maybe the data get stored somewhere in the data bricks file system and the same particular data may get uh, ingested or stored into the specific activity what you are looking at it so ultimate goal over here is to provide you a kind of uh, operational activity maybe you can say you may have a certain data ingestion endpoint and that will be helpful to you in terms of take care of your particular information at the back end so here i can say the output could be let's say once the data been ingested into the system i wanted to define that my data get stored somewhere and in terms of storing the specific data you may have any particular uh, storage component in place right so probably you can think through that it could be your uh, uh, let's say no sql data approach if i'm going ahead because i'm talking if i'm talking about file system and all then i'm assuming that the data is going to be captured with my particular cosmos db and all so it will allow me uh, to store and capture the specific data get going towards that and uh, you may have that specific informations to be uh, taken care with the help of your uh, uh, cosmos db so cosmos db is going to provide you a kind of option where you can say all your particular series of records are getting dumped into that uh, maybe uh, you can consider like a sendra api uh, which is something majorly used for uh, supporting time series uh, time series data modeling and all right so if you are planning so here you have uh, uh, options where you can consider that cosmos db is supporting variety of uh, 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 no sql database apis like uh, mongodb cassandra gremlin uh, sql at core and all that right so like variety of data storage options are available so you can plan and host that one of the component and at the end of the day this particular structure is going to be allowing you to process your particular data on top of that uh, it may be possible if you are planning to go ahead with let's say not data bricks but you wanted to go ahead with uh, uh, azure signups as well so in that such case also 
uh, probably you can link your Azure signups with again Cosmos DB. So in that case also you may have some Spark tool to be utilized and you can run some sort of query on top of that as well. So ultimate goal over here is to provide you uh, such kind of activity to perform the operational activity on top of that. So ultimate goal over here is to provide you a kind of uh, approach where you may have uh, you may have a particular uh, storage you may have your particular uh, data platform where you can build and process that particular data on top of that uh, last but not least in terms of you need to process this particular data whatever you have done dump into your particular uh, storage and all you are expecting certain type of analytics on top of that so you may uh, consider that okay i'll be going ahead with some sort of like a reporting mechanism right so you may have your particular dashboard and uh, probably in that dashboard you may create end up creating some particular reporting tools or uh, like uh, reporting options and all that and you can have some sort of visualization to be done on top of that right so either you can go ahead with uh, power bi or maybe you can consider any visualization. So you can use any of these particular tool chain and you may end up uh, setting up such kind of activities the way it is expected. So these are your particular elements. Maybe you can consider that you will be ingesting your particular data into the system. That's your particular core platform, what you can go, go for it. Uh, from the ingestion, it will be your particular a process unit of your particular data then you may have your particular storage of your particular data and at last you will be performing certain kind of analytics on top of it now just to manage this particular activity if you are expecting any particular uh, monitoring on top of that right so microsoft is offering certain kind of uh, uh, predefined monitoring uh, tool chain right so you have azure monitor as a service and inside that particular monitor, you may have uh, like a variety of data and inputs to be monitored uh, with the help of it, right? So it's a kind of like uh, kind of data you can generate and execute at the back of the data, uh, back of the scenario. And you can also have a, a common dashboard for your overall Databricks processes, whatever you are moving on top of that. So you can have your widgets on uh, accordingly and you can uh have a uh, keep a track of uh, particular your particular data processing and all that stuff so in general <clears throat> you can say uh from the monitoring perspective uh you may end up uh, capturing this particular overall activity and those data may get uh, uh, processed from the back of the system now if i'm considering the data processing or data ingestion because our core requirement is focus on this first two elements only right so uh, these first two elements are your event hub which is something allowing you particular data uh, ingestion kind of activity and the data processing these are the two particular components which are playing an important role so here maybe uh, if you want to break up this particular uh, activity in terms of event hub and data bricks maybe you can think through that uh, as per the architecture here uh, let me add in this particular graphic only so here you can say that uh, uh, you will have a particular write data right uh, the data gets generated and stored into the particular system you may have like uh, fair data so at the end of the day whatever the uh, trip has uh, has been commenced so those particular data gets triggered so here maybe in right data it will be pushing into the particular my data bricks component so whatever the data packets are there it will goes into your particular environment and if it's a fair related activities are there and maybe at the end of the day you need to ingest that particular information so those informations will get captured and stored into the 
uh, Databricks. So the role of Databricks is to basically provide you those informations. You can have the partitions available. And via those particular partitions, the uh, activity which, which will be done at uh, Databricks sites, it will capture those information and uh, process those particular event driven data what you are expecting at the end of the day. So in this particular stream processing in Databricks, we are uh, processing the uh, the data or maybe you can say it, it may perform the jobs and those jobs are running uh, on the particular cluster and those particular clusters are probably written with the code of Java or Spark uh, with the notebooks and all and back of the system you can have uh, this particular Databricks cluster to be created, event hub, event hub namespace to be defined and you can have certain kind of activities to be taken care at the back of the system. Now, in this particular entire exercise, definitely you need to provision a couple of elements. You need your uh, event hub as a service, right? So you will be having this particular services to be provisioned. You need your particular uh, data bricks as in place. And of course, I mean, these are some additional component which you can utilize for certain type of data process and analysis point of view. So if in case any such uh, overall uh, you can say the component which you are planning to execute, let's say cab reader or fair reader kind of like event namespace you can create. And at the end of the day, the Spark queries will be like running on top of that and you can have some better result at the end of the day. So kind of business use case you can plan, even if you are planning or you are thinking about adding a DevOps activity on top of that, right? So maybe you can create your, uh, first of all, the infrastructure as a code, you may have end up uh, having your particular DevOps tool chain to provision your ARM templates and all. Uh, you can also integrate your particular event hub, your Cosmos DB, your uh, particular different workspace component, or even the, the notebooks and other stuff, what you're gonna write for your scripts and queries and all, those can be also like dump into that specific automation activity what you're looking at it. So ultimate goal over here is to provide you a kind of seamless data streaming process at the end of the services. And uh, from the solutioning point of view, you may have those particular services to be taken care uh, from the back of the system. So. Uh, here I can consider that if you guys are planning to go ahead with implementing this particular services, then uh, uh, the activity or maybe you can say uh, here you may have uh, understanding of what all the cluster you need to create, what kind of uh, prerequisites are there. So you need Azure subscription, you need uh, uh, Databricks in place, you need Event Hub in place, and then you can have such kind of implementation to be taken care at the end of the system. Yeah. So this is this is all about like uh, having a kind of business use case or the scenario which we can consider that if in case any enterprise grade solution we wanted to design and have our data processing to be done with different different kind of data storage. If you are expecting any kind of like uh, stream processing and what kind of data you are updating into that system kind of approach you can think through right uh, imagine that here we talked about like complete mode append mode and all that stuff so you can imagine like let's say for example uh, we must have observed that sometime like uh, passengers sit into the cab and uh, they realize that oh yeah destination which i have entered maybe i need to change my destination right so that's your update in your particular journey so as soon as passenger update that particular trip details then again you need to update your fare data you need to update your ride details and everything and then accordingly you need to build to the customer and as well as uh, you can give that particular charge back to the uh, driver, right? So those kind of like details and informations you need to keep on track. It. So depend on your particular uh, uh, streaming activity, what you are expecting, what data you are expecting accordingly, you can plan and structure your particular component on top of that. Make sense, guys? So any any queries, questions you have? I, I know, I mean, time is like we are close to this, but yeah, any, any queries or questions? And of course, I mean, uh, uh, from the learning point of view, you guys will have a particular uh, uh, the specific meetup uh, URL, which is something allowing you to go through with this Microsoft Learn related link, right? So it's process streaming data with uh, Databricks and structured streaming. So probably you can go through with this particular learning uh, mode as well. Yeah. 
So this will help you in terms of uh, exploring this particular business use case and as well as you can get familiar with this particular component as well. And this this particular module is a part of, I mean, if you wanted to go a little bit on higher side. So this particular module is a subsection or maybe you can say a part of uh, data engineering with uh, Azure Databricks and all. So people who are like keen about learning on Databricks a uh, bit more uh, on site, then this is something probably you can think through, right? So yeah, so far any queries or questions you have, you have feel free to go ahead and we will take a look at it, those questions what you have. Please ask questions. You can even unmute your mics and ask the questions. Yeah. OK, so there is a question from Krishna Kishore. What is the role of Databricks in this scenario? As usually we use Cosmos DB directly insert into Cosmos DB. Uh, correct. So as I said, uh, as explained in my diagrammatic view, probably if you can uh, think through. So uh, if you are planning to ingest uh, the real time data, which is something like uh, in a second you are getting millions of requests and if you are directly ingesting into the Cosmos DB as in raw data, then definitely there will be no use of it, right? I mean, you don't want to double process that information. So you just wanted to capture the final data ingested into the system. So the role of Databricks is basically correlating your information, the writing details and as well as the fair details to be combined together. And at the end of the day, it will capture and store the uh, full fledged final data on top of that, right? So that's that's basically the use case. Maybe we can think through. So uh, the role of uh, Databricks is to provide you that uh, uh, that kind of like uh, real time streaming uh, data processing at the back end. And that is something you can dump into the system the way we are looking at it. Make sense? <coughs> Any more questions, guys? I think we'll go for a, a wrap up jigger. Uh, sure, yeah, definitely. So just sharing a particular learning path URL. OK. Thank you Jigar for the session and thank you all for joining us today. Please do share your feedback at about today's session. Also feel free to use the learn module link which is shared by Jigar in the stat section. This will give you access to additional resources to take your learning further. Also please visit our Microsoft Reactor Bangalore meetup page for more upcoming sessions. Thank you all once again and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you thank Jigar. You. Thank, thank you. you everyone.